Alabama's Hidden History is brought to you by Bank First. Tonight we take a look at the old Pruitt Slave Cemetery in Tuscaloosa County. This historic cemetery is one of many that is considered a place in peril. It's endangered by nature, logging, and isolation. That's right. This cemetery sits off an abandoned site off Lake Tuscaloosa. And I spent some time at the Old Slave Cemetery, and I got a chance to talk with the great, great, great granddaughter of the former slave owner, John Welch Pruitt, and he started this slave cemetery. They deserve it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. These people in these cemeteries that are just gone and forgotten, you know. For years, Eloise Pruitt has led the charge to rehabilitate the burial ground that has largely remained untouched. Over 600 slaves are buried here in the historic Pruitt Slave Cemetery in Northport. It overlooks Lake Tuscaloosa, a beautiful view. But what's not so beautiful is the look of the cemetery. As of today, you can see this historic cemetery is in bad condition. During the 1820s, slave owner John Welch Pruitt established the two acre burial ground on his 6,000 acre estate. Many of the graves are still open, headstones broken into small pieces are completely knocked off. Eloise Pruitt and I have a connection to the Pruitt Slave Cemetery. She is the great, great, great granddaughter of slave owner John Welch Pruitt. If that bloodline is really, really deep and we're related, we're both at our grandfather's grave here. Right. <laughs> Eloise learned about the family connection to John Welch Pruitt from her father. And I, Jabari Pruitt, have ancestors who are buried at the slave cemetery. How does that feel, you know, that people, that we've come so, so far from where we used to be? You know, how, how does that feel? Oh, it feels good. And when I started the cleanup at the cemetery, I met so many people from Holly Springs, Pole Bridge, all in that area, you know. And we really, con we just really connected and became friends. The word mulatto came from slavery. It's a racial classification to refer to people who are mixed, black and white. Now, as Eloise Pruitt tells us, John Welch Pruitt fathered a number of children with his slave. I'm looking at a white woman right here that I can lovingly say, this is my cousin. You know, we may not be, but we, we could be, and it's exciting to me. When you hear that you got two black uh, people in your home, they're to calling you cousin, and we're loving it. How does that feel? Well, it feels great. Uh, uh, Willie Pruitt and I at the cemetery, you know, uh, when we used to talk and everything, you know, and, and we said, you know, I said, boy, it'd be something. Uh, we need to do a DNA. Just across Lake Tuscaloosa sits the Pruitt Hagler Cemetery. It's the final resting place for slave owner John Welch Pruitt. I just think it's really amazing that I'm looking at, first of all, a slave owner. Like me, Patricia Kemp is also a descendant of the Pruitt Slave Cemetery. My great grandfather and my great grandmother are both buried there, okay? Uh, and they, they also have, I, I also have records of their codes because their codes put in, into the records on anyone that's buried in the cemetery. Patricia and Eloise have a very close bond. For years, they have treated each other like family. There's hope they may actually be related. And now there are three Pruitts in the room. If you're white and you're a Pruitt, I hate to tell you, but you might be related to me. <laughs> That's reason enough for Patricia, who has made it her mission to recognize those who, until now, do not get the recognition they deserve. That cemetery needs to be publicized. School kids need to drive over there and say, oh, look, absolutely. that's a slave cemetery. It is the largest mm -hmm. slave cemetery in Alabama. Right. And then I researched it and found that it is the largest slave cemetery in the U.S. Yes. That? Yes. Yeah. That's our background. Yeah. Patricia Kemp, Eloise Pruitt, and myself walked through the Pruitt Slave Cemetery, each of us bringing our personal history to the conversation. Patricia says she still can't come to grips with the words slave owner. 
yeah. knowing that you are a slave and the role that you played as a slave, but then you have to think about there were people who did have slaves who treated them even right. worse than what you would think of exactly. the term of mm -hmm. slave to me. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rothman, professor and chair of the Department of History at the University of Alabama says, the Pruitt Slave Cemetery has a legendary status because of the large number of people who were buried there. Pruitt, from, from what I've seen in census records, enslaved, from what I remember, about 100 to 125 people at a time. White people didn't tend to live in this area in large numbers until sort of the 1800s, 1810s, at the earliest. Um, and so thinking about, you know, if there are four, five, six hundred graves, it's impossible for all of those people to have been enslaved. Which meant, according to Dr. Rothman, it would have been impossible for all the slaves to be buried by emancipation in 1865. Rothman says formerly enslaved people sometimes moved. Some stayed on the plantation and worked in the fields for decades. Of course, Tamika, it has been 20 years since I have been at this cemetery, and when I got there, it was sad to say that this is what I saw there, and it's just sad. Now, Chapari, what is it going to take to get this cemetery back to its glory? Well, right now, the station, of course, we are talking to a number of organizations and uh, trying to get them to look at the cemetery to bring some sort of funding to kind of get it back to its glory, and of course, Congresswoman uh, Terry Sewell, we will be doing an interview with her soon. She's back in a bill that is preserving uh, locations like this, uh, places of perils, and of course the Pruitt Slave Cemetery fits into that. Great story, Jabari. What was it like walking through this cemetery? I never knew it existed. <laughs> a lot of people don't, but it gave me chills. It gave me chills knowing that I have a number of ancestors and that's their final rest in place. But when you just kind of walk through it and you seeing just how in, in disarray that it is and need of repair, it's sad at the same time. But the one thing I will say, I was very, very excited that I was able to, you know, spend that mo those moments with Eloise Pruitt, who is the great, great, great granddaughter of the former slave owner, John Welch Pruitt, we walked through and she had the same thoughts as me. She, you know, like she said, everyone in that cemetery who that's their final resting place, they deserve more than what's there now. So it gave me chills and, and it makes me want to go back and even do more. All right, looking forward to you going back and showing it all cleaned up. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Alabama's Hidden History is brought to you by Bank First.